for decades, the Toyota Prius has been loved by reasonable people, though Toyota has reached a sensibility limit. So for the new one, they decided to add emotion, and it's a genuinely desirable car as a result. But everything comes at a cost. Dudes that used 4-in-1 soap really loved to belittle the previous generations of Toyota's efficient hatchback. And while many Prius owners haven't helped lift the car's name, I don't think people are even going to recognize what this is for a while. What you really notice when seeing this in person for the first time is how excessively wedge-shaped this is. Now there are some nice elegant lines here that make sure that this doesn't look like a Tesla truck, and they didn't just invest in the style. You also have pretty good features for the money too, including standard LED projector headlamps with these swoopy DRLs, standard heated mirrors, parking sensors, and proximity unlock and lock. Step up to just the XLE and you'll get rain sensing windshield wipers, and smart key access to the rear hatch and front passenger door. Things get real fancy on the Limited with an available 360 view camera and an automatic parking feature that will cause traffic, but when it works properly, it can pull off a commendable parking job. Your top spec limiteds, like what I have here, also equip this with a power rear lift gate. And in a bold move for Toyota, they changed the iconic chime. Now standard, you will have 17 inch alloy wheels with hubcaps. Skip the base and you'll get unsheathed 19 inch wheels, though all of them have a neat light bar around back. And the rear doors actually use an electronic release. So there's a fail safe button right below the handle, but you need sturdy fingers to use it. While the newfound swagger of the Prius means that it can impress more than just art school barista baddies, that style completely changes the interior ambiance. The windows here are uncharacteristically small for a Toyota, and I think this does help it feel more driver-focused and upscale at the cost of visibility. While I mourn that, I do appreciate the depth of the interior layout and the cohesive lines. Unlike most other affordable Toyotas, this has a wow factor, and there are some notable ergonomic mishaps. One, the lower roof means you will have to duck in a little, especially if you're hopping in the back. Two, the simple 7-inch digital cluster works well, but you may have a little trouble adjusting your driving position to make sure that the wheel doesn't partially block the screen. Though I do like the tiny steering wheel. It kind of has a spaceship look that continues into the dashboard. They wanted this to feel different. The materials aren't exactly excellent, though there was some effort to break up the sea of dark plastics. And in the more high traffic areas, there's matte finished plastics, though I think they did go a little too handy on the glossy stuff. Build quality is good for a 30 to 35 grand car. It doesn't feel chintzy, nor does it rattle like my Corolla. Fortunately, the Prius now has Toyota's extremely stripped down infotainment system. The user interface is simple. The resolution, the response time are good here with the 12.3 inch screen. The eight inch unit is usually adequate as well. And they both come with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard. Go with the Limited and you'll have an eight speaker JBL sound system with the subwoofer. It provides okay punch and should satisfy most people. The Prius also delivers when it comes to features. Just step up to the XLE and you'll have heated front seats, a heated steering wheel, and Softex leatherette upholstery. All of them come with automatic climate control and a leatherette wheel. And if you move up to the Limited, you'll actually get ventilated front seats. A wireless charger is available and it actually does work on some new iPhones, unlike most other chargers due to a pronounced camera bump. Unfortunately, there's no way to get a sunroof that actually opens. You're just getting a fixed glass roof that at least allows in quite a bit of light. Something that I'm happy to report is a comfortable driving position. You sit down kind of low. The seat bottoms provide good support here for me at six foot three. The seats are well shaped. You have lumbar adjustment if you go with the XLE and your outboard knee receives some padding to complement your soft elbow rest. This would be a great cruiser. You also have plenty of hashtag storage and I hate that I said that, but Toyota's marketing department has me at knife point. But jokes aside, there are a respectable amount of usable cubbies to store things in. The only thing it's really missing is a giant cup holder. Space-wise, again, at my height, I have 
a couple inches to spare up front, round back, it's a different story. Now look, this is usable. I mean, my head is kind of touching the roof, but even with someone at my height sitting in a comfortable yet not excessive position, my knees can still skirt behind the cushion and there's plenty of room to let them hang out on the side. We also have padded armrests as standard six USB-C ports, which is kind of outrageous for a car of this size. And if you really load up the options, you can get heated rear seats. So long as you're not regularly hauling around basketball players or sumo wrestlers, the new Prius should be practical enough for you. Though having room to stretch out is a different story, and I'm disappointed that none of these offer rear console vents. The trunk of the new Prius is going to be diminished from the previous model, but I still think it's practical enough for most small family usage. Where it struggles the most is in height, and due to the sloping roof, it drops to a minimum of like 14 inches. At least its length and width are good. I think small families could make it work, and there is good underfloor storage too. Though none of these have a proper spare tire just to fix a flat carry. Behind the wheel, the Toyota Prius provides the most well-rounded driving experience of any car in Toyota's current lineup. A big proponent of this is what's under the hood. So that's a two liter naturally aspirated inline four that's both direct and port fuel injected. This engine has been used in the Corolla for a little bit and it's paired up with Toyota's fifth gen hybrid system, which utilizes a lithium ion battery and a permanent magnet motor up front and in the rear if you get all wheel drive. Notably that rear motor is also much more powerful than the old one. The front motor also sees a power jump Total net output has been bumped by 73 ponies over the previous gen without a real sacrifice in gas mileage. Pulling up this long hill, it's really complemented by the Ease CVT that just takes the engine to whatever ratio it needs to be quickly while also implementing the electric thrust. It's a very clever transaxle and it's also an extremely reliable one. And because of its design, it doesn't have as much of that rubber band feel like a traditional CVT. It uses a separate motor to continuously change gear ratios while still using a planetary gear set at the base of it. It's not chain or belt driven. As smooth and refined as this power train is, the coarse engine note interrupts the piece like a bad producer tag. Although at least the sound- We inject music! <laughs> DJ Stiffy! Stiffy, you didn't need to go this hard. At least the sound is backed up by much improved acceleration over the previous model. Off the line, it doesn't have a bunch of torque to spin the wheels, but there's plenty of mid-range grunt. That's when you really feel the full brunt of its 194 horsepower. The numbers have this getting to 63 seconds quicker than the previous model in the exact same place on a much more hot and humid day. The passing power here is what you notice the most. This is a far more relaxed vehicle, even though it doesn't exactly sound the part. For your money, you are getting an extremely efficient vehicle. Even when I've been driving it like an ass, this thing has still managed a little bit over 50 miles to the gallon, putting it ahead of its competition and the far more lethargic Corolla Hybrid. Now pulling up to highway speed, once the engine settles down, there's not a whole lot of road noise, though there is some wind noise. Overall, for $30,000, I'd still say it's quiet. When we consider what some people are having to pay for these things, Whew. Its argument as a premium-ish vehicle is severely diminished. Taking the Prius over a picturesque, broken Indiana back road, it's comfortable though it doesn't shelter you over all imperfections. In fact, you feel most of the small to medium sized stuff. At least the cabin never feels jittery. Hitting a larger imperfections also tends to not jar the cabin. Though if you mess around too much, you will find the limits of the Prius suspension. Ultimately, it feels smooth and compliant over a vast majority of road surfaces. I think they found a great balance here because this is a comfortable car and when the road gets twisty it excels. Body roll is in a different world from the previous car. This is much more flat 
around corners. Now with the Prius in sport mode, the steering is also quicker. I mean, we have this small wheel which kind of dramatizes that feeling. It's a direct car. There's a little bit of communication coming through the wheel too. It doesn't build up super nicely, but I'm having just an ounce of fun back here. The power delivery definitely detracts from the sporting experience, but it being much more potent helps there too. And even when you start throwing it on corners with imperfections, the fully independent suspension keeps this thing composed. And now with its improved steering, I get a good idea of what surface I'm driving on. And that just further adds to the confidence of this thing, though the view outward does hinder it. I mean, in the past, these things were as approachable as a well-trained golden retriever. Now, obviously you have the smaller windows, but your view out the rear is significantly reduced. You still have a long dashboard. I'm not uncomfortable by any means driving this, but I think this will throw off some longtime fans of the nameplate. At least you have great adaptive cruise control and lane centering standard with over the air updates and a long list of active tech that includes standard blind spot monitoring. And if you or another driver makes a costly miscalculation, it's proven to be quite safe in the testing that it's done so far. The previous gens have also proven themselves to be some of the most reliable cars on the road. Hybrid batteries in the past seem to last about 12 to maybe 15 years depending on where and how you drive. Mileage is less of a factor. Cost to replace them has gone down, but it could still be something like three grand. The 2.0-liter engine under the hood has been reliable in the Corolla and features direct and port fuel injection to keep the intake valves clean. That, combined with the aforementioned track record, means that I will give the new model the benefit of the doubt and recommend it to people that highly prioritize reliability. While the new Prius can easily work as a family car, it doesn't go to the same extremes that the previous model did. And it's really honestly hard for me to think about how they could have made this car even more sensible. So I get why they chose instead to add a motion. To be clear, the Prius has been dwindling in popularity. The people who want maximum efficiency these days tend to go EV unless their lifestyle can't accommodate one. Toyota has also been steadily introducing more hybrids that provide maybe a little bit more versatility, power, or a lower price when compared to the Prius. The previous gen still had an appeal, but it was becoming more niche every year. Following the same recipe of the past would doom the nameplate. Additionally, if they only spruced up the looks, it would garner little enthusiasm. Toyota needed to go all out to get people excited about the Prius, and they did. It's a well-handling, comfortable, attractive hatchback with a feature-filled, swanky, yet straightforward interior. It also retains insane efficiency, but now it has a enough power to feel relaxed in any setting. They made some compromises, but if you can deal with just an adequate trunk size and visibility, the new Prius delivers on its hype. The biggest issue has nothing to do with the car itself. It's just too hard to buy. The demand is far higher than the very limited supply. If Toyota can ramp up production and solve this problem, it would be a go-to recommendation of mine. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like to help me conquer the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe and hit the notification bell for more. Check out my Patreon for an additional podcast, and I'll catch you in the next one. Stiffy, you didn't need to go this hard. Oh, <laughs> fucking